Meatball Talk. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Adam. And welcome to Meeple Talk. So this time we've got Costa Rica, a Mayfair yes. game released, was it this year I think? Or In no, 2016. 2016. Yep. Yes, exactly. And so it's um, a smaller game, two to five players. It's pretty quick I would say, like maybe half an hour half, at most? Yeah, Maybe at players. most. Mm-hmm. They estimate that, but we found it was pretty quick. Really, it's just an exploration game where you're going to go through uh, the jungle, so to speak, mm-hmm. and reveal what animals you can and collect them up. And avoid mosquitoes. Yes. Watch yeah, out. Deadly. Mm-hmm. deadly. So as you see, the board's uh, pretty simple. It's a hex-based mm-hmm. game. Not a lot of components, so it's very easy to set up. Uh, so it's one of those, uh, I guess mm-hmm. you could say, pick-up-and-go games. Um, but shall we have a look at the board? Sure. Let's sure. take a look. So here's the board. You'll see that there are a lot of hexes. In fact, there are 61 hexes. And there's three different kinds of hexes. There's forest, swamp, and mountain. Now these are all put together, shuffled randomly, and played out five on a side. And so this is the exact shape that you will start with in the game. Then there are these explore tokens, uh, representing each of up to five players that can play. And there's one of each on every corner, and that's where the explorations will begin. And then we have this scoring tile. Every player gets one. They're all the same. And they indicate on this side how many points you'll get for uh, the different numbers of animals that you're going to be collecting. On the other side, it will show the three regions, and uh, I guess I'll hold this up. I'll have the three regions, and it will show uh, the different rare and common animals that appear, and how often they appear, and also the threats, how often they will appear in those areas. Um, On this side, we can see some of the cards flipped over. So you'll see this is a mountain, and when it's flipped over, you'll see the animals on the other side. There's always an animal or two animals on the other side. There may also be a threat marker. That triangle is a threat. You see it's a mosquito, like malaria, or some kind of threatening thing. Um, So here we have two jaguars. Um, In another card, we have a frog and a lizard. Um, So that's in the swamp area, and so on. And finally, we have this. uh, This is the expedition leader. So this indicates who is leading the expedition. And that's all of the components. And generally, the way the turn is going to go is that each one of these zones, there are six different expeditions, and all the explorers, represented by each of the players in the game, are going to be participating along an excursion trying to explore and gather animals for their collections. So, well, the expedition leader, that's going to be indicated by this particular uh, oversized meeple here. So whoever's going to be that, what they're going to do, let's say it's Green, who leads the pack. Uh, right immediately on their corner, they're going to start revealing tiles. Now, they can choose when they see a particular animal... Uh, they can choose whether they want to collect or if they want to pass. If they choose to collect, that will just be part of their collection, and that meeple is exhausted for the game then. And then, well, if player uh, turns uh, go around and a new expedition leader decides to go with this remaining group, it's going to dwindle and dwindle over time. Now, let's say the expedition leader did not choose to collect this particular one. Well, next in line in turn can then choose if they want to collect that one or pass. If it goes around an entire uh, round of no pa- of all passes, then they're going to choose, well, let's go keep exploring. And they're going to continue on their way. The expedition leader is going to choose their particular path where they want to go. And this will end on a, a couple of ways. One is if they decide to stop and collect the animals that they have then revealed. Or when they start coming across hazards, I hope to show you some soon. Oh, there we go. Uh, very well laid out. Uh, At some point, you're going to have the mosquito symbol. It's going to represent your hazard. Um, If the expedition leader or anyone else in the team decides to collect with one hazard, this will be part of their collection. But as soon as a second hazard hopefully comes up, well, let's just pretend a second one had and it was here. Um, As soon as two hazards are revealed, that particular route automatically ends. All the animals that were uh, revealed at that point, with the exception of the hazards, these are actually now discarded permanently from the game. The expedition leader, by default, collects all the animals revealed. So it's great if, in this case, this path, we revealed a lot of animals. It doesn't always happen that way. You may have very well, at the beginning of your expedition, at the beginning of your expedition, revealed two hazards right away, and then you're just done, and your meeple is out. So this will continue on 
uh, every group is going to come in from their respective corners. Eventually, you're going to hopefully reveal all the tiles. And then essentially at the end, whoever has the most, they're going to get bonuses. Well, most in two ways, I should say. There are bonuses for the same type of animal. The multiples you have of a particular animal will have a multiplier. Also, for all, a full set of each unique uh, animal in a group will also score as well. So just simply adding up all the points based on what you've collected and whoever's got the most wins. So, this game, mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, Nice lead up. <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind, uh, I'll start. Um, I guess so. Okay, so, um, on the plus side, mm -hmm. the game, you know, the tiles are thick. The, the artwork is pleasant. It's nice to look, you know, nice game to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, these colors are bright and easy to distinguish. So, <laughs> that is well done. I like the illustrations of the animals. Mm -hmm. You probably know where I'm going with this. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. On the con side, um, I'll start with um, setup. Okay. Now, yeah. Steph mentioned that the setup is easy, but I'm Pretty not really convinced. The, the issue with the setup is that it it, it doesn't take uh, a long time to play, but getting all these tiles set up is uh, a, a little bit of a pain, and uh, that gets a lot worse when you start flipping tiles because each time you yes. flip a tile. Oh, everything's moving out of place. Oh, now I have to flip this tile that's surrounded by five other tiles. And then when you do that, oh, everything moves again. So you're constantly moving the board Adjusting. back it into place. It doesn't hold itself together. Right? So the user interface is not good. Um, secondly, it's an extremely simple game. In mm -hmm. fact, the strat there's, there's like basically two strategies. One, which tile am I going to flip up next? And uh, two, am I going to keep them or not? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I, we, we played it, what, three times? I would say so, I'm yeah. done, okay? <laughs> and, the, and, I, and I say that because there's, yeah. there's nothing else to the game. There's, there's no additional strategies. There's, there's nothing else of interest. It's almost mm -hmm. like, I, I mentioned this uh, earlier, it's like putting together a, a puzzle, right? You put the 100 pieces together, you see the picture, and then what else is there to do? Mm -hmm. um, I, and maybe, maybe that sounds a little bit harsh. I, I think Steffi is a little bit more favorable. I don't know. You can say your opinions, but um, <laughs> I feel like, all right, uh, maybe I should go into the other uh, points as well first. Yeah. But um, the idea is that uh, the expedition leader mm -hmm. uh, either chooses the, the tiles that he wants or he passes. Uh, and whoever eventually picks those tiles, they're kind of like screwing over the other player. And you could also mm -hmm. cut off whole other expeditions. And if they have nowhere to go, then they're all out of the game. Um, so it's a very spiteful game. Um, if you have a bunch of friendly people who get along really well together, you know, it's not like your grandmother who's never played a game before and you don't know how she's going to react. This is definitely not that kind of game that you would play with those kind of people. But if there's people you really know well and they like the idea of a take that sort of game, um, then this may work for you. But also, I still want to warn you, it's a very simple game. Um, and um, so, and then there's the scoring. Um, when you do the scoring, and again, it's not a really big deal, but when you add all these things up, I'm, I don't know what's really interesting about the game that would, you know, mm -hmm. encourage you to play more often. Um, the scoring is, is such that, okay, if there's five tiles, then, you know, if you have five tiles, then um, they're worth 15 points. And then if there's three, there's six. And so when you mm -hmm. add them all up at the end of the game, it's really hard to uh, wrap your head around the math. So you might want to, you know, I mean, you can do it. I'm not saying it's really hard, but it's annoying. And the other thing is when you capture the tiles, yeah. um, you're supposed to put those tiles in front of you and lay them out so everyone can see them. But because of the way the scoring is, you can't easily figure out who is ahead. That's really hard. All you can really figure out is do they have six different the six different animals that will give them 20 extra points, right? Uh, you can't easily see any of the other scoring. So, um, overall, I felt like there is not a lot of strategy that's interesting, mm -hmm. um, and it's not, there's not a lot of replayability, and um, most of the moves you make are, are kind of spiteful or, or are in some ways, in, you know, uh, hurting other players, every single choice you make. Um, so, it wasn't for me. I can understand how it could be for somebody else, but mm -hmm. I wasn't a fan of it. For me, I, I would have to piggyback uh, a little bit on that, too. And I think my concern with uh, when you want to play a game and it's got this element of, of um, 
do you choose now? Do you wait till later? Uh, the idea, hopefully, is that you want to create a, a sense of tension. And I think uh, it falls flat in the sense that it's how they design their risk uh, component. And one of the examples is they divide up some of the animal species by rarity. Some are more rare, some aren't. However, when exploring through, I never felt this sense of uh, need to continue or not continue based on the rarity of the animal, just what animal it actually is or how many hazards I've or, or, or threats I've come across. So really it didn't matter if it was a rare or less rare because variety was key. So I just kind of pursued on and persisted on. Uh, the other thing too, is that I find that there's a lot of, I feel like an element of waste because um, there's a lot of risk for being the expedition leader that everyone can pass. Sure. There's nothing that happens to them if they pass, but as the expedition leader, if you pass, you're either giving, uh, if there's a lot of people in your game, so much opportunity for someone to pick up after you that it's really hard to continue on, uh, if you are the expedition leader. Plus, if you've got the two hazards, uh, you are eliminated, whether it's soon or later, as soon as you come across two hazards, you're completely out. So you bear a lot of the, the risk, so to speak. And also to the idea of cutting off the board, if you happen to be one of the trailing people in that expedition and the board gets cut off from another expedition or something else happens and you just cannot explore no matter what your zone is been severed you can't do anything again that's a lot of waste so i feel like uh because of that there's not a lot of incentive to go on a lot of lost opportunity i feel like it's a very passive game it just sort of happens uh whether you call it an auction game or, or any uh, however you uh mm -hmm categorize it i don't feel like it has that same level of enticement that other games with a similar kind of mechanic really uh, have to offer so i feel like the overall gameplay fell very flat so as adam said you get the idea after a couple times and then you're sort of like you know what? i'm done uh so you you can absolutely try it absolutely but i don't mm -hmm. think this is one that has a long-term uh lifespan yeah. really uh, and so that's yeah, and, kind and, of my and, feel and having said that i think mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure there are people who are looking for a very quick filler game who will mm -hmm. find this enjoyable i'm not saying no one would like it i mean it as a game it works um mm -hmm. but i i didn't find any excitement or thrill or like anything that's mm -hmm. really interesting about it you know after the second game i i don't know why i wouldn't play another game other than this one so yeah. that's our review Yep. <laughs> so, but thank you for uh, sitting mm -hmm. through. But you know what? Um, if you have any other comments, if you have any other opinions, mm -hmm. we do want We'd to love to hear. Yes, Exactly. Because we always want to get other perspectives as well. But mm -hmm. you know what? Thank you very much for watching. We're going to see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.